Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life UK, where great barbecue doesn't have to cost a fortune. Today we are cooking my version of a cheesesteak sandwich on the Aldi Camaro. So that's right, we are doing my version of a cheesesteak sandwich, not a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. So if you're looking for a Philly cheesesteak sandwich, then this isn't the video for you, but this is the video for you because this is completely different, really, and you are gonna love the way that this is cooked. So I've started off, I've got two supermarket steaks. So these aren't big and thick. These are quite thin because I wanna cook them really quickly. So these cost me about £3.50 each from the local supermarket, and they are ribeye steaks. They've got a, a fair amount of marbling for them. It's not the best amount of marbling I've ever had, but these were the best ones out of the ones on the shelf at the time. Now you see that one of them has got quite a large piece of fat in the middle, and if we were cooking slowly, then that would just sort of jellify, and it wouldn't be the best sort of eating. But the way that we are gonna cook this today that is going to go really crunchy and that's what i like about cooking in this style so while we're talking about the style we're cooking these steaks dirty or caveman style depending on what you've heard about them before so by doing dirty or caveman style steaks this means that they're cooked directly onto the hot coals so we don't use any grill grate you lay them directly on and then you flip over you might get a bit of charcoal stuck you just pull that off and you cook away. It is the hottest way you can cook a steak, and in my opinion, it is the best way that you can cook a steak, because that charcoal imparts its flavor into that steak itself, and gives it an ultimate sear on the outside. Any fat that you've got on there crisps up super well. It leaves, it'll be catching fire in there, and, and burning away, and it just you get such a crunch at the fat, which makes it a really good way to cook. So to start off with, we need to get our Kamado lit. So ideally, with this, you want smaller pieces of charcoal, which kind of goes against the majority of things that we say about Kamado cooking. But I would want a really level cooking area of charcoal so that I get maximum contact across the charcoal. If we've got big pieces and it's very up and down, it's much harder to get a level... Um, steak in there to give us ultimate contact points across it so i'll go in with a small amount of charcoal to begin with a few wax woodies get them lit and then once they're lit i pour a bit more of the small stuff on there so ideally i use i tend to keep hold of a lot of the shrapnel out of the bottom of the kamado from other cooks i put it in a little sealed pot and when i'm doing a cook like this this is ideal but once you've got that nice bed of hot coals already glowing so your, your woodies have gone out. We spread it out and then you sprinkle your shrapnel on the top and it gives us a really nice level bed. Instant high heat, but it's not gonna last very long, which is ideal for a cook like this. And it's a good way of using up them small pieces of charcoal that otherwise just go in the bin. So as I say, I've got this lit. I've got a nice bed of charcoal. I've put that other charcoal into the bottom and we're glowing really well so that is our bed ready for our steaks but before we put our steaks on and while that charcoal is warming up you need to prep your veg so traditionally you would use onion and a green pepper in a cheese steak i like to add a yellow pepper in there as well because i like the color as much as it is and it's a little bit sweeter than the green so you still get the bitterness out of the green by having that in there as well and you get a bit more sweetness from the yellow so i used a whole green pepper a whole yellow pepper and one and a half onions in this cook and i'm cooking two cheese steaks so i've got two steaks one for me and one for the missus so these i've cut relatively thin because we want to be able to cook them quite quickly so we put them over to one side spray a little bit of oil on there if you don't have a spray bottle of oil you can drizzle some and toss it through a bowl they don't need to go on the grill separately. We're gonna mingle them through as we're cooking anyway. So we've got all that veg prepped. We've got our charcoal burning super hot, really glowing red in the bottom, and it's time to lay our steaks on there. Now these steaks, I do absolutely nothing to them to begin with. No oil, no seasonings. Because we're putting it directly onto the charcoal, anything we put on there is gonna burn. I don't want the oil on there, 
because then I'm literally going to be burning the steak underneath. I'm going to have flames trying to get around it and I don't want that unless I'm cooking out that big thick piece of fat in the middle. And we don't want any pepper on there because pepper will burn at these temperatures. If you want to, you can add a little bit of salt to begin with, but I put all my rubs and everything on after I've cooked. So we lay these steaks, as I say, onto the charcoal, trying to keep them as flat as possible and get as much contact as possible. So we lay both these steaks on, now because they're relatively thin, they literally can take a minute each side, and that is it. So that should give us a nice medium steak. So we lay it on, and as you can see, you get a fair bit of smoke come out of there, you might get some flames lick up and around the, the fat that is there because on, you were cooking directly, so if you was cooking on a grill grate, that fat would drip. It's got nowhere to drip to, so that charcoal is just going to hit it and it's just going to combust. That's going to give you a nice crunchy piece of fat. So after a minute, it's time to flip. Now as I said earlier on, you might well get pieces of charcoal stuck to it. You ain't no biggie. We just flip it over, get them both flipped, and then pick the charcoal off of the top. And just move it off to one side. Another minute on that side and it's time to take them off. So I take them off, any charcoal that's stuck when I take them off, I pick it off once I've got it onto my resting plate. And this is where we want to add our flavours. So I've got uh, the Rusty Barbecue Company's Cattle Dust and the Herby Garlic Butter. I've mixed that together into a bowl. I'm just going to sprinkle that on top of the steak itself. Then we're going to get it loosely covered in foil. If you can have that plate warm to begin with, it's going to help keep your steak at a, a warmer temperature while we're cooking our veggies. So as quick as you can, once you've got them covered, you want to go straight on with your grill grate and straight on with a plancher so that we can start to get these vegetables cooked. So the moment we go on with that plancher, we spray it with a little bit of oil and we get our veggies straight on there while it's cold. This will give them time to start to come up to a temperature while the heat is building in that plancher. If we had a searing hot plancher straight away and we dumped our peppers and onions on there, they're going to burn a lot quicker. So while the heat is building, the temperature in the peppers and onions are building at the same time. So about every two and a half, three minutes, I'll give them a quick toss. And after about seven minutes, they're done. So that steak's been resting for that time. After five minutes, I've sliced it. Now I've done that off camera because quite simply, I forgot to switch, switch the camera around and do it while I was slicing it but I've got some footage of it sliced for you. So as you can see, it is a nice um, medium done. And that's like that all the way through the steak. You're going to get some pieces of the steak that are going to have a really nice char on the outside, and some pieces aren't. The pieces that have got more of a char are the pieces that have sit in direct contact with that charcoal. The pieces without the char are where the charcoal sort of dips away, which is why if you can get it as flat as possible to begin with, you're going to get even more char on there, which is what we like. So the vegetables are cooked. They've had about seven minutes, and we've just been moving them through, adding a little bit more oil if we want, and I've split these into two separate piles. Now it's time to add our cheese. So traditionally, in a cheesesteak, you would go provolone. In the UK, that ain't the easiest thing to get hold of. So I wanted to use uh, Gouda cheese, or Huda, which is its actual name, from the Netherlands, but I couldn't get hold of that either. The supermarket was out of stock of that, so I have gone Monterey Jack. So it's a nice mild melting cheese, and that is gonna work nicely in this cook. So I've just laid a few slices of that across my peppers and onions, shut the lid down just for another minute, and just let that start to melt down. So while that cheese is melting, we need to start our build. So I've got French stick from the supermarket again today. I've not buttered it, I've not done anything to it. It doesn't need it. There's enough flavor going on in all of this that I am going to, um, that you're not gonna need the butter or any toasting. So we get our steak and we're just gonna put that onto the French stick and just pile it on there nicely. If you've got any juices left on your plate, you can pour them over the top at the same time or you can get your veggies on and pour it on over the top after that. So we've got our steak on there. I'll cut you back to the uh, vegetables so you can see the cheese is nicely melted. Just get a large spatula underneath there. Pick it up, 
bring it over to your sandwich and we're just going to layer it across the top of that steak. If you use the top piece of your bread on the back, it will stop everything from sliding off. And that is it. We are done and we are ready to taste. I'm so hungry, the smell of this has driven me crazy but while I'm cooking it, you can't beat dirty steak and then as a cheese steak as well with then peppers and onions and cheese. It's just the ultimate sandwich. So let's give this a good bite. So in actual fact, I gave it a good three bites before I come back to it because it's so good. The peppers, they really sweeten up, especially when you use a yellow one as well as a green. And that balances out the savoury of the uh, steak, especially by adding that cattle dust and the herbic garlic butter in there, which lifts the steak. There's a nice amount of salt in both of them rubs, which really helps bring out the steaky flavour and then just gives it something really extra. It doesn't need any sauce. It doesn't need anything else. That to me is perfect just the way it is. If you've never cooked a dirty steak, then make sure that you do because they are ultimate. If you haven't got a Kamado, you can do this in a kettle. It'll work exactly the same way so long as you've got a steel plancher to be cooking your uh, your veggies on or a cast iron pan, anything like that. So if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life UK, then please do stop subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video, leave me a comment underneath and thank you very much for watching.